I am Anil Kumar and now in this video we will understand how to find number of x intercepts for the given quadratic function. So the question here is to analyze quadratic equation for number of x intercepts. We will not really find their value but we will just figure out how many x intercepts will the function have. So basically you can be given quadratic functions in three different forms and these are y equals to ax square plus bx plus c which is the standard form or it could be y equals to a times x minus x1 times x minus x2 or it could be y equals to a times x minus p whole square plus q right so these are three different forms of quadratic equation the first one is called the standard form this is intercept form and this is vertex form. You also call this as factored form, right? So <clears throat> basically you are directly given the factors. Now if you are given equation in standard form, then how do you find number of x-intercepts? So we are trying to analyze how to find number of x-intercepts. So we want to find number of x intercepts that is the exercise is that okay now this number could be 0 1 or 2 quadratic equation degree 2 can only give you 0 1 or 2 x intercepts right the real x intercepts i should say right so x intercepts are always real okay zeros could be imaginary perfect so let me uh, explain how we can do it if you are given equation standard form, you have to use b square minus 4ac, right? So, so the critical thing to use here is, uh, let me write the formula here, b square minus 4ac, right? Now, if b square minus 4ac is, is greater than 0, then we have 2x intercepts, right? So in this case, we have 2x intercepts. So number of x intercepts is 2, but if b square minus 4ac is equal to 0 we have one x intercept and if p square minus 4ac is less than 0 then we have no none or 0 x intercept so these are the uh, number of x intercepts which you will get by analyzing b square minus 4ac b is coefficient of x a is coefficient of x squared and c is the constant to give you an example, if I write y equals to, let us say, uh, <clears throat> let's take a simple example, uh, x squared plus 2x uh, plus, let's say, 10. Now, in this case, b is 2, right? So, we'll do uh, b squared minus 4ac is what? b is 2, right? So, it's 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 10. And that clearly is negative, right? So, 4 minus 40. So which is less than zero so therefore this will have no x intercept so here the number of x intercepts will be zero right <clears throat> how if i change one of these signs and if i have equation let's say uh, let's say uh, minus 2x square plus x plus 5 for example in this case b square minus 4ac will be equals to 1 square minus 4 times minus 2 times 5 and that makes it positive so it is greater than 0 so in this case we will have two x intercepts right now if you need to find an equation which has only one x intercept you're looking for a perfect square right so the equation could be y equals to for example it could be uh, let's say x square let me make it simple uh, plus uh, 2x plus 1 right so this kind of an equation well is a perfect square right we could always write this as uh, x plus 1 whole square so here you have one intercept and you can always find that b square minus 4ac is going to be 0 in this case b is 2 right so 2 square minus 4 times 1 times 1 is 0 so that works so that is how you can figure out number of zeros when you are given in standard form. Well, let me also tell you, this is the maximum work you have to do 
if given in standard form, finding x-intercept involves a lot of calculations. For the other two cases, it's not that much of work. If I have equation as, let's say, minus 2, x minus 3 times x plus 4, we clearly have two x-intercepts, right? So, so here, the number of x-intercepts is, is 2, and they are at x equals to 3 and x equals to minus 4. So you can just read it. So this is intercept form, right? How about this one? If I have y equals to half of x plus 3 whole square, it has only one x-intercept, and that is at minus 3, right? So it has only one x-intercept, which is at x equals to minus 3. So if you are able to get this factored form, then you know there's definitely an x-intercept, right? So equations which I could write here as, let me write an exception to the rule. If I write x squared plus 1, now that equation cannot be factored, right? So you cannot factor this one, right? For x belongs to real numbers. So, so in this case, it is 0. Of course, this is not in the factored form also, right? Anyway, so if you can factor, then you know you have either 1 or two x-intercepts. Now, this one is very interesting, uh, analyzing the vertex form. So let me give you different kinds. We could have x minus p whole square. Uh, let me write this as minus uh, three this time, and one I'll write y equals to, I'll make this negative, let's say minus x minus, uh, let me give a value here, five, okay. x minus two whole square plus four, and let's say y equals to minus x plus 1 whole square and minus 3. And we have y equals to x plus 2 whole square uh, plus 5. So we have four different conditions. Can you tell me how many x-intercepts can you expect? Well, let's give you an idea. Sketching helps, right? So we can sketch and then figure it out. The idea is like this. You can read vertex. So let's read the vertex here. Vertex is at 5 minus 3. So for the first one, vertex is at 5 minus 3. 5 positive somewhere here, let us see. And it opens in which direction? So opens at upwards, right? So if you open upwards, you're going to cross at two points. So this one will give you 2, right? X-intercepts. How about this one? Here we have the vertex is at 2 and 4, right? So 2 and 4 is above the line. Let me use a different ink. So 2 and 4 will be 2 and 4. Let's somewhere here, right? Minus means it goes downwards. So I'm not right. So it crosses at two points again. So, so again here, it will be opening downwards and thereby it will give you again 2 as the number of x intercepts. In this one, the x-intercept is at minus 1, minus 3. So minus 1, minus 3 is something here, and it's opening downwards. That negative is downwards. So it is uh, minus 1, minus 3, opening downwards, kind of like this. It will never intersect, so the number is 0. Do you see that? The last one here is minus 2 and 5, somewhere there, opening upwards, right? <coughs> so again, it opens upwards from minus to 5 and so there is zero number of zero number of x intercepts right so you can see if you know the vertex and the direction of opening you can figure it out another simple rule is check these signs different signs means two so in this case let me summarize different signs means number of two x intercepts same sign means number is zero right and if this is missing if q is missing if q equals to zero then in that case the number is one for example you could have y equals to two x plus or x minus three whole square now q is missing that means at three itself you have a uh, Two roots right two real roots so it is one so if you are given in 
vertex form, you could easily figure out the number of intercepts without doing any calculations. You need to analyze where the vertex lies. If it is below the line of x-axis, right, and opens upwards, it will result into 2. But if it opens downwards, there will not be any x-intercept. However, if you have q value 0, then, then the point is only 1, as we took in the example there, right? So as an exercise, write equation of write an equation which will have only one x-intercept, let this be at minus 7. So you could do that as an exercise. I am Anil Kumar and I hope this helps, right? Now you could also treat x squared plus 1 as, as vertex form, right? That really means that x squared plus 1 has a vertex at 0, 1. So this x squared plus 1 has a vertex at 0, 1 and it opens upwards. So if has vertex here and it opens upwards, so no x-intercept. So I hope that summarizes beautifully how you can find the number of x-intercepts and at times also their value just by looking at the equation, right? So if it is standard form, calculate b squared minus 4 is c. If it is vertex form, you can straight away know how many. In this form, look for these signs. There are only two signs, right? One here, the other one there. If they're exactly same signs, no x-intercept. Different signs, opposite signs, two x-intercept. And if q is zero, then one x-intercept. I hope that helps you to uh, understand or summarize the whole thing. I'm Anil Kumar. You can always share and subscribe to my videos and learn a lot. Thank you and all the best.